guys, welcome to the channel and today it is our QPR preview. So it is uh, Steve McLaren's QPR travelling to St Andrews this weekend and both teams, you know, on paper looking at the um, looking at the statistics and where we stand in the table, both teams fall just above the relegation zone or just in it. Um, doesn't stand very well but, you know, I would say if, you, if you've watched the games that we, we've actually been the better of the two teams. Um, so it's a must-win game for Blues. There's no doubt about it. We're, you know, we're at home, and the way QPR have started the season um, hasn't been, you know, they haven't set the world like they've been quite poor, to be honest. Um, so obviously, looking ahead to the game, I actually went to watch QPR against West Brom, and they were they were atrocious. First half, you know, not too bad. It was one one at half time. I said to my mate, you know, not too bad. You know, decent half. You you you're well in this game. Second half, they were taken apart. They were absolutely obliterated. Second half, um, they were all over the shop. They were really poor defensively. They had nothing in midfield, nothing to hold up up front. Um, if they play like that, you know, we could have a field day. You know, they, they brought in a couple of good players. We look at, um, at Tom Ahmed and Naki Wells, the two notable signings. Um, really good signings for them. Um, I was a little bit surprised that they managed to get them. I'm a big admirer of Naki Wells. So, you know, those. Those sort of signings, they, they, they're a bit eye-catching. Uh, um, obviously, they didn't play against West Brom. So maybe you know that's something to look out for. Obviously, they managed to get their first win of the season uh, against Wigan last week. And before that, they'd lost every game. So um, they sit on three points. We sit on three points with three draws and two defeats. But the way we played last week, you know, and the way we played all season has given me, he's given me, you know, he's given me hope. So, you know, as I can see that there's, there's no notable injuries or suspensions in the team um, everybody's fit and available obviously all barring Isaac Vassell um, who unfortunately doesn't look like he's going to be back anytime soon we'll be lucky to get him back for like November time I, from what I hear I don't know I'm, I'm not in the know about that one um, but from what I can read you know there's no notable injuries or suspensions so looking ahead to the team and the way we played on Saturday uh, gives you caution it gives you reason not to change the team um, so my team would actually be one change, I would make one change to the team that played against Forest, and it would be the goalkeeper. I mean, everybody's been criticising Lee Camp, and I have to sit and agree with them. Before that, he hadn't been too bad. He hadn't really been tested much, but he hadn't been too bad. I think Carl Truman was unfairly dropped anyway, but after Saturday's clangor that he dropped for the second goal, I would, you know, I would take him out and put Truman back in. So it'd be Truman in goal, a back four of Colin, Dean, Morrison... Uh, and uh, Pedersen, uh, a midfield four of Hotter, Kiftenbeld, Gardner, Gary Gardner, uh, and Magoma. Now, I thought the midfield was so, so good on Saturday. What they did was so effective. They, they, the, the, two mid, the two central midfielders sat really deep, nice and deep. Not too deep to invite pressure, but just deep enough to try and, you know, always be winning second balls, and we were always on those second balls, and the energy was good. And we played almost as a forward four, the midfield to the wide two midfielders almost played as a forward four with the strikers um, so every time we won the ball back and the midfield two did it so well we were four on four with their back four um, and with the pace that we've got and the creativity it was so hard for them to deal with it um, so I'd like to see us you know do exactly the same again even but a bit higher up the pitch um, I think we could really cause QPR some some terrible problems if we we carry on like that, and obviously Duke and Bogle up front. I wouldn't change the two. Shea got his goal, but Bogle's played well, so I don't see a reason to to knock him out of the team. And I really like what I really like what Bogle's doing at the minute. Um, I thought Jukovic actually did a lot more running in behind. I think a few teams had sussed out the way we were playing in terms of you know playing too many diagonals to to Jukovic, and it was it was our main threat to try and get him on the ball and then get the flick offs. From him, and we actually tried to limit that and tried to play wide and try to play round Forest and um, get Mags and Hotter on the ball quite a lot. Bogle did a lot of running in behind, but so did Jukovic actually. We played quite a few balls, just you know, drops over the top of the uh, over the top of their fullbacks, and Jukovic would be running into those pockets in behind the fullbacks. And I was really impressed with the way we changed it up again. It just goes to show that Gary Monk is so on it tactically, um, and he works really hard, and we're so detailed in the way that we approach games. So I was really impressed. Um, wouldn't change a thing that we did on Saturday, you know, in terms of organisation as well. You know, and, it, and it's it's a, it's a massive game for us. Um, you know, a team like this comes to St Andrews, and it's the it's the first game that I can say you look at it in paper and you say yes, we need to be winning that. It's no disrespect to QPR, 
I'm sure they would say the same if we came to their place. Um, but it's a game that we need to win. Plain and simple. If we don't win this game, not that I'll be putting pressure on Gary Monk, but there'll be a few mumbles like, ooh, it's going to be another season of uh, of relegation fights or, or lower, you know, really poor finish again. Uh, and we don't want that. You know, we need to be taking advantage of these sorts of games at home. Um, so, you know, let's make sure we get that first win. That'll be key. I think if it's if, if we do manage to get the win on Saturday, it's been a really good start to the season. Not set the world alight, not, nothing like that, but a good steady start to the season with the difficult games that we've actually had. Um, and then just, you know, giving you a score prediction quickly. I always do this and get it wrong. Um, I usually can predict a draw or a win or a loss. Uh, I'm going to go with a win. Um, I've got to be positive, and I, I am positive, you know, I'm not just saying it, I am positive. I'm going to go with 3-1. Morrison, uh, Mags and Hotter. I think both wide men will, will, will chip in with the goals this week, and uh, probably a set piece for Morrison. Um, and I'm confident, you know, we win this game, and it's been a, it's been a good start to the season. So let me know, guys, down in the comments below what you thought uh, of my team, what you think the team will be. Please give me your lineups. I'll be interested to read see how close or what people are thinking about the team. Uh, and give me your score predictions and goal scorers down below as well. Um, and don't forget to leave a like, guys. You've been doing really well recently. Can we hit 20 likes on this video? Um, it helps the channel massively. And if you haven't already, guys, subscribe so you get all the latest content um, when it comes out. Don't forget to put the notification bell on as well um, so you'll be notified every time I upload so I don't have to post it on Twitter and that and push it out there. Um, you'll just know straight away. Um, but guys, if you are enjoying it, please keep watching and I will see you in the QPR vlog.